Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. I've been getting very excited about an imminent album release from Alter Bridge, and we just got early access to the opening song from that album called This Is War. I've always been super impressed by Miles Kennedy's voice and technique and the way that he's able to completely slay very difficult passages. So I'm looking forward to being totally wowed. Let's get to it. stop you miles uh this beginning is totally smashing i love the big dramatic entrance of it all what a great way to start an album right it feels ominous it feels huge it feels epic oh i bet this entire album is going to be amazing by the way if you haven't seen they have released some other singles from this already uh really liked Pawns and Kings, just FYI, that one was incredible. Um, anyhow, this album, I think is going to be really super heavy for Alter Bridge. The darkness of it is, uh, I feel like it's very keenly felt. I dig the way they have this big choir in the background too. They're combining elements from different genres immediately. Oh, lots of dark elements from different genres. Let's go back to the beginning. Right? Just that. The bass uh, in there, uh, the percussion, the distortion on the sound, it makes you feel like it's like an explosion in independency or something. So minor. So I'm not sure where the layering is coming from. I'm guessing maybe they had a choir that did some backing vocals in here, but it sounded like there was a solo line. I think was Miles's voice that just stuck out right in there. Right there. I love these big open thick chords. This is so epic. His voice is amazing. I love the connection and line that he has in his sound. I know um, when I talked with him in an interview a while back, we talked about studying and, and that sense of support and connection that's really low. He's very, very aware of that and uses that in his singing. And you can hear it by that ever-present quality in his voice. He just sounds attached, like there's always taffy coming out from somewhere. <laughs> Uh, and then he has these flips at times into falsetto. They're just so easy sounding. The way he uses that to bring in a certain timbre is incredible and just technically so very sound. I want to go back to his entrance. Okay, so on the word blow, he flips up into falsetto up there. And I like that because 
the blowing of the west wind is going to have a little hootierness to it. If you were thinking about the sound of wind blowing or like um, when you hear a howl of the wind, right? It's often going to have a little more air in that kind of sound. And falsetto tends to have more airiness in the sound. It's a perfect choice for a timbre. Um, yeah, he could have belted that. That's in his belting range. But instead, he chose to use falsetto to find the perfect timbre for that word. And he does these little cries and below as he was raising up. I loved that. But oh my gosh, it's also, it's the way he tastes the words because he's so connected already. So you hear that um, just efficiency in the making of the sound and the vocal folds when they come together. It's very efficient. But then on top of that, the way he's able to place his sound in here so that he can chew through those words, but never have it drop out of the pocket. I, it's extremely impressive to me. Again, foot there. Man, I super hear an influence of Jeff Buckley in here. I it, I hear it there so keenly. It's um, it's in the vibrato even, uh, but the connection and the way he's scooping into some notes. It's like ah, it has the a heavier feeling than Jeff Buckley. A little more edge to the sound even. But wow, I, that, and I say that with so much respect too, because Jeff Buckley, I think, was just amazing. <laughs> so wow, I love, love this line in here. Um, the way he gets into that sweet upper area, he's not in falsetto, I think, when he goes on It's Time. But he's staying essentially in like a, a head voice, kind of depending on what genre you're talking about vocal registers. And if I'm talking about a classical genre, I'd refer to that as head voice. Some other genres would refer to that as mixed voice. Um, so when he gets into that area, he's able to essentially thin the sound out, doesn't take a ton of weight up to it, thins it out without flipping over into a falsetto. Again, technique like crazy. Here we go. Right there. Oh, it's so beautiful and so connected. It's so <laughs> I love the way he leans into that too, and he does flip there. Beautiful. <sighs> I the long lines in here are awesome. He's staying connected that entire time, but really they feel to me more like operatic lines than pop lines because of the way that he just keeps feeding that energy the whole time. Again, it's like taffy, 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 taffy coming out. It's so connected and strung together. It's gorgeous. And even the way that he says the words and they're enunciated and strung together, like he's moving from one delicious sound to the next. Let's add to that the production on here. Uh, I'm not sure how they did the extra backing vocal in there, but wow, gorgeous harmonies. I think that's Miles too. Um, and just layering of it. But I love the way that his voice is extremely present and clear. And it has this bright shimmer on it as well, which can, it, it's naturally there in Miles' voice, but I think you can also enhance that a little bit with some EQ. His 
lead vocal just sounds crisp, clear, delicious. And that's within this framework of having so many heavy instruments. We got to what I think was the chorus here. It's just extremely thick with sound. And it'd be really easy for a vocal to get lost in here. Miles's vocal is so very clear. Let's go back to that again. Oh, back for it. There we go. I really like the the lyrics in there too, the sort of self-belief that it encourages um, and the demand to not compromise who you are deep down to. This is really cool. And on the of shadows it's interesting. Uh, when you have those more broken apart, big choir chords, uh, that's just very typical of this is a dramatic situation. Ha! 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 Instead of the long, long, long lines you can have in dramatic situations, but I think that having the broken apart chords builds up a little more anticipation here, and it also sticks out of the texture a little more. Again, there's tons of sound swirling around. This is so heavy, so you want it to be able to sparkle through for just a moment. The vibe and the sound is great. That's cool. Don't let them unravel you from inside. Oh, I like these lyrics. Um, there was a really cool thing in here that he does to reiterate notes as he's moving. I want to go back to it. So mind, when you're singing a long vowel, this is actually a different song, so it's got two vowels in it, but mind. A lot of people would just say on the ah vowel, go mind. But if you want to really accent moving from one note to the next, you can put a little H in. You go mind, which is exactly what he does. It makes it feel a little more aggressive. Check it out. One more time. I love the guitar in the background. Again. Sigh. That's just so pretty. It's so pretty. I love the way he's able to have bitey, aggressive vocals. He always has just a ton of ring on top of his sound. It's like brilliant. Um, but then he's able to have these floaty, ethereal moments too. It's gorgeous harmony. Oh, well, that's so fun. Listen to that backing vocal and the way it goes up. The, the vibrato on that too is super brilliant. Mm. Nice. 
anyways, this is a, a good example of hooking up into the support really well. Believe you can hear the way. Uh, I'm hoping you can hear the way. I can hear the way that he hooks into his support really well on the word believe as he goes up higher and hooks essentially through the L. Um, when a person has really, really low support like that, it's there's a steadiness to the sound, a continuity of the power. I don't hear any sort of like hawking. Instead, it feels like, um, again, like the taffy idea, right? So instead of hawking a baseball at you of sound, I'm getting streams of taffy, essentially. Um, so in order to achieve that support, you need to look really, really low. A lot of people think, oh, I just should breathe from my stomach. And the answer actually is lower. Go much lower. Go to muscles that are in your pelvic floor. We talk about this in the interview too, about going down to muscles that are extremely, extremely low. Those muscles are the lowest ones that are restraining the diaphragm on the way out. So that's where the super duper low support comes from that makes him have these incredible lines, especially continuing these lines with these super high belted notes. Uh, check out on Believe. For your mind, this is One more time. It's really good. That, man, I just, massive respect for that backing vocal. That's hard. So high. excited that he's doing this that's he's doing a technical thing that's like i don't get to talk too often about um, <laughs> so i'm really excited to talk about it now uh, also this is such a cool transition i love the way it feels like a different chapter right now so a lot of times when people go down they let the sound chunk back this is just one of the most super common mistakes where they let the sound kind of drop back. It feels a little more thick, perhaps, and within your inner hearing. It doesn't necessarily sound thicker out there. Um, but there's a, a tendency to let the sound go, like, from this masky, masky portion, scheming, and let it drop back. Um, also, the note is going lower, and sometimes the sensation feels like it's going down here. So people will lean into that. And... It often means that you lose a little bit of clarity on the words or that the sound will fall out of the pocket. So what Miles does is he has this feeling where it's coming forward still. So it goes like this. So scheming, essentially scheming, and it stays forward. It almost, sometimes I like to think about it rolling forward or almost like you grow fangs as you're going down instead of letting it go chunk back. So he does that on every single one of these descents and listen to how clear and in the pocket his voice stays. time because it's great <laughs> it's great it's like what a great demonstration of vocal technique such a cool transition
there's something about the tone of Mark Tremonti's playing that I really dig. And part of me wonders if that's because I know he also sings really well. He did uh, a Frank Sinatra tribute recently. It was really impressive. And sometimes his guitar lines sound like they're sung. Then all of a sudden you'll get into this stuff that's also very technical. So you go like, whoa, you know, got some virtuosic background there as well. There's something about the tone that's very pleasing to me. Now, this is as a non-guitar player that I'm saying these things, of course. I'm going to go back, listen to that solo one more time. This feels super soft. Yeah, very sun so And then there's your virtuosic. That's like the way that Miles is staying in the pocket the whole time. Have to note that again. I think that the way he sang Fo in this was different from before as well. He did not flip into falsetto that time. And I think hearing him sing these words like makes me almost want to just mouth them along with him to enjoy how words can feel. Um, it's such extremely gorgeous enunciation. <laughs> Here we go. Wow. I like that they brought that back. <sighs> Not only do I love Miles's incredible vocal technique throughout this, I just think that the message of the words is really incredible. Believe in something, don't compromise who you are, um, fight. Essentially, the story about fighting for yourself, for your mind standing up for yourself. I think it's so important that we work on ourselves and that we hold ourselves up and make ourselves better and better all the time. And I feel like this song really got to that, especially with the idea of this war and the heavy music around. I feel that that depicted how difficult that battle can be sometimes. I am super excited for their album, which is going to be coming out on October 14th. So I hope you'll check it out with me. And if you want to see that interview where Miles and I talk about low support and a ton of other stuff, you can check that out in the link over here. May you fall more in love with music every day.